Akashi is a monster. With or without his emperor eye, he's still a freaking badass. Hey, what's up, B? Operation I Droid here, and in this video, I'll be reviewing Kuroko no Basuke Season 3, Episode 6, or Episode 56, however you want to look at it. But, if you haven't watched the episode yet, I highly recommend you do so by following the link in the description below and coming back to this video when you're done. With that being said, let's head into the review. Alright, so this episode takes off exactly where the last one left off and we continue the amazing game between Rakuzan and Shudoku. And now, in the last episode, we left off with um, Mirorima and Takao saying that they're going to start using their secret weapon. What their secret weapon was, we didn't know, but we finally learned it in this episode. And it was freaking insane, yo. Like, Mirorima starts his shot before he even has the ball, and Takao passes it to him right as he's about to shoot it in the air, and Mirorima just drains the three and doesn't miss like always and it's insane now of course this didn't just happen overnight there is chemistry between Takao and Mirorima as we've seen in past episodes but we got even more backstory as to how this kind of bond and chemistry actually happened and we get some very interesting backstory on Takao on how he wanted to beat Mirorima in middle school because Mirorima and the Generation of Miracles just absolutely destroyed his team, but when he got to high school, him and Mirorima were in the same team. Kind of like a Haikyuu type of thing, although Kuroko no Basuke kind of started before. But either or, both shows are cool. Um, and the situation was kind of funny, and Takao kind of just never told Mirorima that until one point, and he said, one day I'm going to impress you with my passes. And I believe that definitely in this game, um, Mirorima was impressed by Takao's insanely accurate passes. And we find out how much Mirorima has developed as a character. We remember from the first time that we ever saw him play that he really didn't rely on any of his teammates. He just shot the ball himself. He didn't trust them. And he thought that the only way they could win was if he made all his shots. But now we see the complete... 360 of Mirorima's character where he trusts his teammates even more than himself now. He trusts Takao to get the ball in his hands and he trusts that if he misses his teammates will get the rebound. And honestly that's really freaking good and you can see just how Mirorima has changed. We saw how Aumine Al changed. We saw how Kise has changed and it's pretty freaking amazing to see that. Now as the game goes on um Shoroku starts rallying for a comeback using this amazing tactic between Takao and Mirorima and it's so good that it's even compared to Kagami and Kuroko how Takao and Mirorima are the light and shadow of Shuroko and I thought that that was really cool and it kind of makes a lot of sense. Their style is different but they definitely are two first years that kind of just put the team on their back and work really well together as we just saw in this game. However, it was not enough because Akashi is absolute and he is a monster. Literally, as Shudoko was trying to rally back and it looked like Rakuzan was starting to lose everything, Akashi gets the ball and shoots it in his own basket. He literally shoots the ball in his own basket, completely intentional and what he did was brilliant. He did this most absurd possible act you can ever do in basketball so that he could completely change the tempo because his other teammates had completely lost their uh, vigor because of this amazing comeback that Shudoko was doing and Shudoko just had this amazing tempo going for them but with that one shot Akashi just silenced the whole stadium and just completely killed the tempo and was able to talk to his team without taking a timeout and kind of just get them back in the game and after that it was it was over pretty much after that 
Akashi went on to state that Mirorima was never going to take a shot again and when it looked like everything was on the line, Shuruko needed to make a shot, Akashi just stole it. And that was pretty much it after that. After Akashi stole that ball and said Mirorima was not going to shoot again, everyone on that team, on Rakuzan's team, just went ballistic and started making all their baskets. And unfortunately, Shuruko was unable to win. I really would have liked to see Shuruko win, but then... Akashi would have had to gouge out his eyes, which is pretty crazy. Akashi, he's brilliant, he's a leader, he's a cool character, but there's a couple screws loose in his head because, I mean, he could have said, I'll quit the team if we lose this game because I shot it into our own basket, okay? Like, that makes sense. Like, yo, that's a big deal. But for him to go as far to say he'll gouge out his own eyeballs, it's just like, yo, I understand you're confident you're going to win, but that's just something you don't say. Like, take a step back, Akashi. But of course, that still worked to motivate his team, and they eventually won. However, there's still one thing that I mentioned in the past reviews that's really irking me, and it's this guy with the gray hair. We haven't seen him do anything. They haven't focused in on him at all. The only time we saw him even do anything in this episode was when they pressured the double team on Takao. And when Takao passed him, we saw his eye. I saw his eye. I was like, yo, he actually has eyeballs. Okay. But whoever this guy is, I'm willing to bet that he's a pretty big deal for the Rakuzan team. And he's like their secret weapon because we haven't seen him do anything. Especially in this extremely close game, we haven't seen him do much. Um... And I really feel like that's going to be a secret weapon that they're going to unveil in the finals. And it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. But all in all, this was a very good episode. It's sad to see Shudoko lose. The unyielding spirit of Shudoko that they never give up. Unfortunately, they didn't have enough to beat Akashi, who literally plans ahead for days. Like... He was moving slowly throughout the whole first half so that in the second half, if he ever needed to move faster, as when we saw him steal the ball from Takao, he had that available to him. And he did it, which was insane. Akashi, like, he's extremely good. And he is an extremely good character. And he's pretty much just put himself up there as the person to beat and just like the ultimate villain, even though there's no villains in sports animes, but the ultimate goal to surpass. And it's going to be hard for either Kise's team or Kuroko's team, whoever ends up going to the finals, because we still have one more semifinal match before the finals. So in the next episode, we're going to see Kise's team versus Kuroko's team. And it's going to be an awesome rematch from the first match that we ever saw in the series. And I cannot wait to see it. Anyways, let me know your thoughts about this episode in the comments section below. I'm definitely excited to hear what you guys have to say, as well as let me know who your MVP is. Mine, it's still Akashi. He, he is just on another level. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next review. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and welcome to the operation.